emotional, baby. Woo! What was the question again? <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Kelsey Dara. I'm known for making internet videos and I'm on a nice little TV show on E! But I normally don't make videos like this. I don't really like vlog, I don't do Q and A's. I've got my friend Kate here, she's helping me shoot this and I have been going through a very interesting time with my chronic pain and I'm finding myself having a lot of anger. Uh, I've had chronic pain for five years. Um, I have trigeminal neuralgia and anesthesia dolorosa, which is a neuropathic chronic pain nerve condition in my face, head, jaw, teeth, lips, chin, neck area. From a botched surgery, all you guys know this. You can watch videos about it. I've made videos about it before. Anyways, and so I put a call out to you guys to answer some questions through like a little Q&A situation. And so Kate is gonna help me here. I'm gonna try and be a happy little bean. I've got my boy Barry here. You'll always be my baby. Let's get started. Kate, roll the questions. How do you deal with the fact that people presume you have to look a certain way to be in pain? How do I answer this question without getting incredibly defensive? I spent so many years going to therapies and hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming and neurofeedback therapy and pain management therapy to learn how to not let that pain become my entire identity. And so in a way I've had to separate the brain from the body feeling and now I see our healthcare system and people who don't believe spoonies saying if you don't look a certain way that you aren't in a certain amount of pain, which blows my f mind because I've had doctors and therapists and specialists tell me that in order to live a comfortable life, I, myself as the person in pain, have to find a way to live outside of it. I think the first thing you can do is be very honest about your pain and be vulnerable and be vocal about it. And I think as pain warriors, we don't wanna be complainers and we don't wanna be a burden. And I love this quote, if I'm not saying anything, it hurts. If I'm telling you something about it, it really hurts. So if I'm already vocalizing it, then you should know like it's bad. And I think it, it starts with learning how to explain your limits and your boundaries and what you can and can't do realistically and educating people and it falls on us and that sucks. That is the longest answer for the first question, but I'm emotional, baby! Whew, let's go to number two. <laughs> what do you do when you're in public and you're hit with really bad pain? My biggest fear is getting hit with a TN attack while I'm in public. Uh, I prepare my balls off. I bring backup medications, I have doctor's phone numbers, I have exit plans for every situation and that causes a lot of anxiety and agoraphobia. But having your plan out in public, it kind of just becomes natural. And I have found myself uh, as something as similar as excusing myself, going to the bathroom and checking with my body, seeing where my levels are at. And if it is unbearable, not feeling guilty about leaving the situation. Even if it's a work thing or a meeting or um, you know something really important that isn't just like hanging out with your friends, which is also important, but whatever. I think it's about assessing, you know your limits. And if you can stay and push through and then deal with the pain and come back home later and be messed up, or do you need to leave in that moment? Only you can decide, only you know your limits. As someone without chronic pain, what does it feel like? And do you ever get used to it? Oh my God, this feeling is so crazy. Okay, so for me specifically, TN is called trigeminal neuralgia and it is, uh, it has two types, right? The kind that I have is flares. So the TN, the trigeminal nerves runs all through your face, into your head, into your chin. And for me, whenever I have a TN attack, it affects the entire face. It feels like lightning bolts, burning, stinging, zapping, electrocution, um, tearing apart like someone is taking an ice pick to each of my bones and slowly, uh, crushing my entire face open. The AD, the anesthesia dolorosa, is, is what's chronic every single day. It is localized to this area and it runs in all the subsequent places that's connected to these nerves. And it feels like every single day, 
someone is holding a blowtorch to your chin while also stretching it with like metal clamps. And it feels so tight and then sporadically throughout the day I will get what feels like ant bites across my face. And if I talk for too long or if I'm on set or if I'm doing comedy, that like ignites it. The more I use it, the more it hurts. But again, like this is my way of fighting that. Like still doing it anyways and then at the end of the day, taking care of myself. Like pushing myself to a limit and then taking care of myself. So when you ask, do you ever get used to it? I never get used to the pain, but mentally I've gotten used to, this is what it's gonna feel like. And it just becomes a new normal. Is there a good way to tell people around you that you're struggling? <sighs> I think the people that are most important to learn about your pain are your employers and your loved ones. And that can be the two hardest people to understand what you're going through, especially if it's not something you've lived with your whole life. Like for me, this happened five years ago. I was a different person. I had to mourn my life before pain. I had to understand that now a piece of my brain is filled with daily chronic <laughs> up shit. and understanding that the only way someone is going to get that is if I vocalize it, right? They can't understand if I'm not talking about it. If they just see it and they don't know how to help, it's unfortunately, again, a burden that falls on us to be vocal about what we need and knowing that if someone loves you or someone finds you valuable, like if an employer employed you because you're intelligent and smart and you show up and you do your they will understand. I think our biggest fear is that we're going to tell someone and they're going to go, oh, never mind, we can't deal with that. But I think people are a lot more flexible. And I want you to remember this. 50% of Americans live with chronic pain. Think about that. It's like, there's two people in this room right now. <laughs> right? It's like, I think you have to give people the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be understanding, but also come with facts, honey. Come with your papers come with your doctor's notes like whatever you got to do to come to unfortunately prove your pain sucks but we got to do what we got to do do you ever feel guilty when you're having a good day Whew. no i do not take good days for granted and that i think is a weird gift about being a spoonie which if you don't know what spoonie means like someone who lives in chronic pain or illness that's like our word for each other i Whenever I'm having a good day, I do not take that for granted. And like I said, I think it's a weird gift from the universe that people who don't, who aren't Spoonies don't understand. Like a good day for me, everything's brighter. Everything's a little bit more exciting. My energy is a little bit more up and I do not take that for granted. And I practice mindfulness and living in it and making sure I'm taking full advantage of that moment. And also remembering other Spoonies on that day saying, I'm gonna do this for you guys. People who can't get out of bed, who physically can't lift their bodies up today. I'm going to do this for us. And I think like building a community in that sense is really important too. Do you deal with chronic pain affecting your personality or not feeling like yourself? How do you cope? Wow. This is a really tough question again because I wasn't always like this. I became incredibly irritable and angry and frustrated and confused because when I would have these days where I couldn't get up, that's not like me. I would keep saying like, get the f it's really mean to myself because I knew how I was before pain. And so the acceptance of what your reality is now can be really depressing until you figure out how to turn your pain into purpose, whether that be volunteering or uh, educating people or just like getting up that day, like fighting it a little bit um, is kind of how I do it. But also being really kind to yourself because I spend every day trying to make sure that this thing does not become my entire identity and I've let it become a sliver, right? Like I am a girlfriend, I am an actor, I am a creator, I am a comedian, I am this, that, a good friend, a good daughter and also a spoony. So I'm trying to keep those buckets full, you know, and just let Spoonie have like a tiny little purse. 
How can I help a friend with chronic pain? Whew, this is a great question because A, it shows that you care and you love your friend and that's really sweet and like we need more people like you. I think educating yourself without putting too much of the burden on your friend so for me, it's like educate yourself on the subject as much as you can without them. YouTube videos, web articles, there's support groups all over Facebook, not suggesting things because uh, you heard about it, you read it on the internet. Like we know our bodies best. And so if you're gonna come and offer advice, always come with it with an intention of being helpful and not preachy. So to wrap up this incredibly emotionally charged video, I'm sweating, Barry's tired, Kate, how do you feel? Great. Oh my God. I just wanna to say to anyone dealing with chronic pain and illness that like there is hope, there are ups and downs, that this, this life is a roller coaster, but I believe you, I love you, I want you to get better, and we're all in this together. Find your community, find your happy place, find your safe spaces, be your own advocate, speak up, be vulnerable. We're the people that are gonna change this system by sharing our stories. So thank you guys for being vulnerable and thank you for listening to this weird video that I usually never make, but here we are. Stinky boy, stinky boy. He farts like a human and it sounds crazy. He's silky.